up out of the grave Break into the wild And don't be afraid Run into wide open spaces Graces waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Graces waiting Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom There is freedom Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom There is freedom Come out of the dark Just as you are Into the fullness of His love For the Spirit Spaces, graces waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Graces waiting. Welcome to Woodbury Lutheran, our online campus. My name is Pastor Tim, and it's a joy to be worshiping with you uh, this weekend. We conclude our sermon series in, in this Grass is Greener series. Vicar Andrew will share with us our message today. This weekend, we also celebrate our independence as a nation, where we have so many freedoms that are ours that we can celebrate uh, just about every day of our lives. But also this weekend, we celebrate the freedoms that we have in our Lord Jesus, the freedom to serve one another, to love one another, to help each other, uh, sharing God's love in ways that can change this world. I'm excited about that freedom that our Lord shares with us today. Let's begin our service 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading comes to us from Galatians chapter 5, beginning with the 13th verse. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. And so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, and then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. The sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And there is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. And since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Again, this weekend we celebrate the 4th of July and the freedoms that we have as a nation. But I also want to share with you the freedoms that our Lord gives to us. As we looked at that reading from Galatians chapter 5, we saw that there is no law against the certain things. And that included love, joy, kindness, patience, peace, gentleness, all of these things. There is no law against that, which means we have every freedom to use these gifts that God has shared with us. So I want to give you a, a big thank you today that you continue to share your generosity with us, that you continue to love and serve with joy and patience and kindness, that you continue to bless the ministries of Woodbury Lutheran here and outside these walls, and that people who don't know our Lord can come to know him. As you share your offering with us this day, uh, I want to thank you for that. You can use your uh, device, your mobile device, to scan the QR code. Uh, if you're in the habit of uh, provi uh, providing a check, you can mail that to the church office. Uh, you can text to give. You can go online. However you choose to share your offering with us, just remember how grateful we are that in freedom you have chosen to share that with us so that God's kingdom could continue to grow. You give life, you are love, you bring You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your Give love. 
Let us pray. Gracious God Almighty, we are so grateful to you for the blessings you pour out upon us, for the freedoms that are ours. We thank you, O Lord, that even when we look in other directions, when we think the grass is greener elsewhere, you continue to remind us of your love. You bring us back to recognize that uh, there is no greener grass than what you provide. So continue to strengthen us in our faith. Continue to fill us with your spirit that even when we face trials in our lives, we don't complain, but we look to you. We find in you our hope and our certainty. And so now this day, O Lord, we we pray that you would be with those who are celebrating, uh, those who are traveling, those who are being, uh, being reminded of, of this, this 4th of July weekend, those who are um, having fun, uh, keep all of us safe, O oh Lord, uh, during uh, the celebrations that we are, are sharing. Uh, be a blessing to those, once again, who are driving. Uh, allow for them safety in their driving. We also remember, Lord, that uh, there is hurt and sorrow in this world. Uh, we think of the uh, the families that have been impacted down in Florida with this, this building that has collapsed. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who have lost loved ones, grant them, uh, grant them your comfort in this time of, of sorrow. Uh, for those whose loved ones are still unaccounted for, uh, Lord, I pray that you would give them peace as they wait for, uh, for answers. We also lift up in our prayers this day uh, Ellie Jansen as she is... Uh, recovering and following a staph infection. I pray, O oh Lord, that uh, as she has been hospitalized for this infection, you would let your hand of healing rest upon her, uh, bringing uh, not only healing to her, but also strength uh, to her body. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for your promise of, of presence. Uh, let your presence be known uh, in all of our lives. And now hear us, O oh Lord, as we pray together the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Death is 
conquer and our Savior holds the keys. There is a name that reigns above all others, Jesus Christ, the King of all Kids, we have something uh, extra special for you this week. We've got Kids Link ready for you to go on off to. So pull out those devices and you can scan the QR code that you'll see here on the bottom of the screen. If you are uh, from ages about three all the way up to the fifth grade, you can scan that QR code and t- it'll take you off to a teaching that is designed just for you. Uh, but if you are over that age, you get to stay here with me as we continue to uh, talk about the grass is greener and celebrate the freedom that we have in Christ today. Let's take a look. Well, as we prepare for our message today, we want to also invite you to take these words, to take this message deeper with our scripture card. So if you want to get a digital copy of that, you can scan the QR code that you'll see on the screen. It'll take you right to the place that you can uh, go deeper with us throughout this week. There's awesome prompts and questions on there for you to challenge uh, yourself and to take this scripture deeper this week as well. As we move into the message portion of our sermon, Uh, We are going to base this text as we finish up our Grass is Greener series uh, on Ecclesiastes 12, starting with the eighth verse. It says, Everything is meaningless, says the teacher. 
completely meaningless. Keep this in mind. The teacher was considered wise, and he taught the people everything he knew. He listened carefully to many proverbs, studying and classifying them. The teacher sought to find just the right words to express truths clearly. The words of the wise are like cattle prods, painful but helpful. Their collected sayings are like a nail-studded stick with a, which a shepherd drives the sheep. But my child, let me give you some further advice. Be careful, for writing books is endless, and much study wears you out. So that's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commands, for this is everyone's duty. This is the word of the Lord. Father, may we find true meaning by aligning our lives with your will. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for freedom. We thank you for uh, the will that you have given us and the words that you have uh, shown us, the will that you have uh, called us to as we follow your Son. Today, as we prepare to hear your word, we pray that you would prepare our minds and our hearts, uh, remove ourselves that we might hear the word that you would have us hear, and challenge us, Father, by your word. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it is July 4th, and that means I get to say Happy Independence Day to each and every one of you. And what better way for us to celebrate Independence Day than to be here in worship together? Now, I know the more traditional way of celebrating Independence Day would maybe be with a parade or a backyard barbecue or, of course, the classic fireworks after dark that we will hopefully be celebrating later on. And those are great ways for us to celebrate. Hopefully you've got some awesome traditions that you're going to be able to take part in a little bit later on. But I got to say, I think that being in worship is, is kind of central. It's at the heart of this idea that we get to celebrate uh, as, uh, as free people and the free status that we have in this country. You see, we have a free status here that is not something that everybody in every nation is able uh, to actually enjoy. And so for us to be able to be here in worship is such an important thing for us to continue to celebrate freedom by simply exercising our right to do so and to be here uh, in this place and in our worship setting. And so as we do that today, we are also going to be finishing up our sermon series, Grass is Greener. And during this sermon series, we have been uh, going through the entire book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, and as we finish up on the 4th of July, we have a really awesome opportunity to talk quite a bit about the idea of freedom. Now I say that because if you've been following along during this sermon series, you know that we have been kind of walking alongside Solomon in his search for uh, freedom in some sense. He is searching for, really for the meaning of life. And he is looking for it everywhere under the sun. And so we've come along Solomon and we've looked at things like, like wealth and pleasure and work and knowledge. And through each of these things, we have found that Solomon comes to a dead end in the road. He still continues to be searching. He still looks for something even bigger, something that is a little more meaningful or a little less meaningless than those things that he searches for throughout the entire book of Ecclesiastes. And so what we have come to find each and every week is this common theme that if you look to things under the sun— you will not find true meaning. The only way that you can find true meaning is to look to the one who is above the sun and who created the sun and everything beneath it. And friends, the same is true with our freedom as well. You say, even today as we celebrate our status of, of freedom in this country, we have to also recognize that there is a far more important status that we hold, and it's one that is only found through Jesus himself. Now, I want to reemphasize something that we have talked about each and every week. We've talked about it quite a bit through this series, but it's super important for us to, to really distinguish what we're actually talking about today. Wealth, possessions, uh, work, and, and knowledge, those are all good things. Solomon does not conclude that those things are bad. In fact, he says that they're good. He says that they're actually gifts that God gives us 
that we should be able to enjoy. And so when we think about freedom, we say that freedom too is good. Freedom is a good gift from God that we should also celebrate, we should also enjoy. But the thing is, is if we put our entire identity, if we put all of our meaning in life into this idea of freedom, even the freedom that we have as citizens of this country, well then, we're not going to be able to find true meaning that is found in Christ. You see, it's when we take Christ out of that equation that we run into all sorts of different kinds of trouble. And so that might be that if, why, if you are in uh, this series with us and you've been looking forward to some epic conclusion, some uh, big thing that Solomon is going to wrap up the entire book of Ecclesiastes with, with some big nugget of wisdom that you can take away, you might be a little bit caught off guard when you heard in our reading today, in the very first verse from that reading, this idea that everything is meaningless— Completely meaningless is what Solomon says. Solomon ends up running right back to the place that he started his entire journey. After all of this searching, after all of the different experiments that Solomon goes through to try to find meaning under the sun, he comes up with this answer. Not exactly the satisfying answer that you were hoping for, I'd guess. No, you see, this answer is one that still leaves us confused. It it leaves us disoriented and dissatisfied. It's one that, that calls us and beckons us to still look for something even better. It calls us to look for something that might not be under the sun. And I've got, I kind of want to let you in on a secret. That's kind of the point. It's why Solomon continues on in our reading, and he starts to talk about all of the, the, uh, frankly, impressive resume that he has. He says, everything under the sun is meaningless. That's his conclusion. But then he continues to say, but keep this in mind. The teacher was considered wise, and he taught the people everything he knew. He listened carefully to many proverbs, studying and classifying them. The teacher sought to find just the right words to express truths clearly. So hopefully by now you are understanding that Solomon is pretty well qualified. Like if anyone were to have the know-how, if anyone were to have the ability and the resources to find meaning in something under the sun, Solomon would have been the one to do it. And yet even he, in all of his resources— in all of his wisdom and his money that he had, even he came up short in his search. So right about now, you might be wondering, well, what's the point of all of this then? As we read these words in chapter 12, we might be wondering, was this just a big waste of time? Was it a a big exercise in futility? I mean, man, if we were going to come up with this Conclusion, we could have stopped reading in chapter 1, verse 2, which said this exact same thing. So that's why it's important for us to read these last few verses, to go into the next couple of verses that, that conclude this entire book, because these are the ones that, are what, that is what Ecclesiastes is all about. They're the words that give us a new and a fresh perspective to understand all of the experiments and the things that Solomon went through. In verse 11, uh, the wisdom of God starts to come out of Solomon's words. It says, The words of the wise are like cattle prods, painful but helpful. And you see, the the idea that Solomon is is getting at here is this idea, this, this... search for meaningless, all of this talk about meaninglessness, as painful, as frustrating as it may be, it is actually also extremely helpful because it's the type of thing that allows us to look outside of ourselves, to finally search uh, outside of our own abilities and our own resources, 
to finally begin to stop looking under the sun, but actually pick up our eyes and look above the sun to find the true meaning that we have in life. Sometimes it's a painful experience, a confusing, disorienting, or frankly, disappointing experience when we encounter the brokenness of this world and everything else that this world has to offer that acts like a cattle prod to point us back to God and to finally recognize and realize how blessed we are to have the God that we have, a God and a Father who loves us more than we could possibly imagine, a God who would actually step down into our brokenness, into our meaningless existence and provide us complete wholeness and provide us true meaning and true purpose. You see, it's this painful experience that Solomon goes through that he records in the first 12 and a half chapters of Ecclesiastes that finally leads him to his final true conclusion. He says, that's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commands. For that is everyone's duty. That is everyone's duty. He says this is the meaning of life. And that idea that he's talking about, everyone's duty, it, the, the words that he uses originally, they don't exactly translate well into English. But it actually kind of means it is the all of man in a literal sense. In other words, this is like the essence this is the total sum of man, is to fear God and obey his commands. Think about that for just a moment. Fear God and obey his commands. Can it really be that simple? Fear God and obey his commands? Can it really be that simple? Don't get me wrong. I, I, by no means am I trying to minimize the goodness that lies in this statement. By no means am I trying to underestimate the truth and the wisdom that we see in this refreshingly simple conclusion that Solomon has. But it's almost like you'd think after 12 full chapters that Solomon would have come up with something a little bit more, I don't know, elaborate. He would have come up with something a little bit more complicated. But the reality is, the truth is, it is this uncomplicated. This is what we were made for. This is our purpose in life. It is that uncomplicated. But here's the rub. This uncomplicated statement is also a haunting statement for us as well. The thing that haunts us about this statement is our inability and frankly, sometimes and in some moments, our complete refusal to actually live up to this purpose. And so like Solomon, we might try to look for something different. We might try to avoid this purpose and avoid this reality. But the thing is, even when we encounter this reality, even when we try and we fail to live up to this purpose, these words still lead us to life. Look, Jesus Christ is the only one who is able to fear God and keep his commandments to the standard that is required. He is the only one who is able to do it perfectly. But the good news of the gospel message is that he did that perfectly perfectly for you. He obeyed every command for you. He perfected the wisdom of Solomon for you. And his resurrection from the dead, that is literal living proof that not even a cross can separate 
us from the life and the blessings and the freedom that we have living in the will, the perfect will of God. So friends, he's already done it for you. Why? Why would we look anywhere else but him? One of my favorite memories of uh, fireworks on the 4th of July actually ironically happened when I was in Canada one year. My wife and I, we had gone to Niagara Falls on a vacation. And we were on the Canadian side of the border, and I uh, had gotten us a hotel room and kind of finagled my way, talked my way into being uh, at the highest floor, like the 14th or 15th floor, and uh, on the side of the hotel that overlooked the falls. And the whole reason I did that was so that we could be in our hotel room to watch the fireworks happen right there from our hotel room and above the falls. And it was a beautiful display of fireworks, but the most surprising thing and the coolest thing was actually after we took our eyes off of the fireworks at Niagara Falls and we looked out into the distance and all across the land you could see these little fireworks shows popping up all over the horizon. Each and every one of these little towns that were celebrating the 4th of July in their own special way. And I remember sitting there and thinking just how cool that was. How amazing it was that we have all of these tiny towns, big and small, all the way across this great nation. And how each and every one of them comes together on a day like today, on the 4th of July, to celebrate our freedom in a really similar way. It's that idea that we sing about and we talk about in the Star Spangled Banner. The rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air that reminds us of the freedom that was purchased through the sacrifice and all of these different battles that we have fought as a nation to simply declare, protect, and defend our freedom. So friends, that is something that we should absolutely celebrate. It is something that we should never take for granted. And truly, as citizens of this nation, we should every day try to live by the ideals that our founding fathers set forth in the Declaration of Independence, that we should each and every day look out for each other's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Probably one of the most famous lines from the Declaration of Independence. But at the same time, as followers of Jesus— we should also understand that there is a deeper, more fulfilling meaning to these words. That true life, true liberty, true freedom, true happiness and meaning and purpose is found not in our policies, it's not in our politics, but rather it is found in the arms of a loving Savior who would lay down his life and sacrifice his life to purchase your freedom. And just like fireworks on the 4th of July, when we look to the cross, we should see a representation, a reminder of the battle and the sacrifice that he won our freedom with. So my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ who have already been set free in Christ, let me ask you this question. What is it that you are doing with your freedom? Our reading from Galatians chapter 5 says this, For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. And what it looks like to use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature always makes me think of the comeback that you might hear in an elementary school playground. At least you heard it in my elementary school playground. You would, you would be doing something on the playground that you probably honestly shouldn't be doing, and, and some other kid would yell at you to stop doing it because it was bothering them, or they knew that you shouldn't be doing it as well. And, and then you would yell back at them, and you'd respond, I don't have to stop. It's a free country. Now you might say, well, that's, that's just juvenile. Who would actually continue to live that way? But you see, I think I see this even through into adulthood. 
Sometimes we are so quick to defend our rights. We are so quick to protect our personal liberties that we actually fail to show our neighbors the love that purchased freedom, true freedom, for us in the first place. Sometimes it looks like us being so tight-fisted, so, uh, so protective of our possessions and our money and the things that we think provide us security that we don't even lend a helping hand, reach out to help someone, a neighbor who can't quite even put food on the table. Or sometimes it's even as simple as something like filling every single waking hour, every second of our day with either work or play that benefits us and us alone, that we don't have any time to serve our neighbor as we're called to do. See, friends, if this is what we use our freedom for, if this is the things that that we prioritize and that we value, when you break it down, isn't this just another way of us searching for true meaning under the sun? Friends, if this is what we use our freedom for, then I got to say our freedom too is meaningless, like chasing the wind. So instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Can it really be that simple? You see, this is what true freedom looks like. It's the true freedom that Jesus showed us, that Jesus taught us and commands us to live by as well. And you might notice that that it is found in love. It is found in service. It is found, yes, even in following the commands of a father who loves us, of living in the will that purchased new life. And it looks like clinging to his son for all of the times that we can't do it on our own. You see, we were bound in slavery to sin, but Jesus set us free. And so those who now belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Look, we left our slavery to sin on the cross, and we walked away from the cross following in the footsteps of Jesus. And so now we walk in step with the Spirit, living and walking in the freedom that he has called us to live in. And so later on today, when you are watching fireworks or watching a parade or however it is that you choose to celebrate the status that you have uh, as free in this country, take a moment to also celebrate the status that is the most important of all, that you are a child who is loved by God, one who has been set free by the blood of the Son, Jesus Christ, and one who now lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we walk in step with the Spirit, as we live by his power, we always look forward to the day where we will walk in grass that is greener than we could possibly imagine, where we will live freer than we could possibly fathom, and where we live with him in the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for setting us free from sin and death and the devil. We thank you for the wisdom that you have shown us, the glory that your Son has gotten through us by uh, his death and resurrection. We pray that each and every day you would remind us of the freedom that we have, not only as citizens of a country that we live in, but as citizens of your kingdom. So let us look forward to that kingdom each and every day as we go about our lives, as we live in step with the Spirit, in complete and total freedom because of what your Son has done and the love that you have for us. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name.
Amen. And thank you for joining with us in worship today, a, a day that we can thank our Lord for the freedom he gives us in his son, Jesus. Uh, make sure once again you grab a scripture card. Uh, you can find that by scanning the QR code on the screen right now. Uh, take it deeper. Spend time in God's word throughout the week, not just today, uh, but daily, uh, that you might be strengthened in your relationship with him and, and that you would grow in your faith as well. And now, as we prepare to leave this place together, as we prepare to uh, move into the kingdom at large, uh, receive this blessing from our God. And the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll see you next time. creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry and then from north to south and east to west we'd hear Christ be magnified Were the whole earth echoing his eminence, his name would burst from sea and sky, from rivers to the mountain tops. We'd hear Christ be magnified. be magnified let his praise rise Christ be magnified in me oh Christ be magnified from the altar of my life Christ be magnified in me when Stand strong and worship you If it puts me in the fire I'll rejoice because you're there too I won't be formed by feelings I hold fast to what is true If the cross brings transformation I'll be crucified with you Because death is just the doorway To resurrected life if I join you in your sufferings, then I'll join you when you rise. And when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing, my song will be the same.
See.